the recording right now. Um, all right, so uh, welcome to the Hockey Reference uh, Stat Head Seminar. Uh, my name is Jonah. I'm the social media manager for all of the sports reference websites. Uh, uh, and um, I'm joined today by Katie Sharp, who is our customer success and social media associate with StatHead. Um, in case you don't know, um, StatHead is the sort of premium suite of, of research tools uh, that allow you to dig into the hockey reference database in, in a more uh, 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 powerful way than just going to a player page and looking at their stats and stuff like that. Um, so uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about that. We're, we're gonna start by going over some of the data that you can just find on hockey reference. So what is actually in our database? Um, I'll go over some of the new stuff uh, that we've added sort of recently, as well as um, some of the advanced stats that may be harder to find. Um, and then we'll stop if you have any questions about that. And then I'll turn it over to Katie and she'll show you how you can, you can use StatHead to, to go through that data and actually find like really interesting or in-depth or surprising research facts. Um, then we'll take more questions, do a wrap up and all of that. Um, if you have questions um, during the presentation or when we solicit questions, the best way to get those in is gonna to be to submit them in the chat. Um, so if you, uh, Katie and I will be kind of, kind of monitoring that as we go. Um, and if you have any questions or if there's anything you wanna know, uh, just feel free to drop it in there. Um, one other thing I wanna point out, and uh, we'll mention this a couple of times, but by uh, going, uh, signing up for the seminar, uh, we're offering a, a special discount on StatHead. So you can get uh, three months free um, on an annual subscription. So basically 25% uh, uh, off the annual price, giving you three free months out of 12. Um, if you wanna sign up for just the hockey one, you can uh, get on that with uh, hockey three free is the code. Uh, we also have an all sports option, which lets you uh, unlock all of the set, set head sports. We have basketball, pro football and baseball, and you can use the code sports three free for that. Um, so I'm gonna briefly stop the screen share just so I can switch tabs um, and uh, bring us to a page that I think will probably be familiar to most of you. Um, let me go back to share screen and go up to there and... All right, is that is that working for everyone? Um, Katie, since your camera's on, can you just give me a thumbs up if the screen share is working? Okay, cool, great. So you should be seeing right now the uh, homepage for Hockey Reference, um, which I'm sure most of you are probably pretty familiar with. Um, so what I'm just gonna do is give us kind of a brief tour of the site and uh, kind of go into some of the deeper stuff you can find as well as explaining some of the new things that we've uh, recently added to the website. So uh, actually I'll start with that because that's kind of the big, biggest thing and the most exciting news. Um, we updated our website to uh, include uh, box scores and game logs from every game in NHL history, all the way back to 1917, 18, you know, the very first season. Um, so uh, if I, I, I'll just go here just to give you a, a quick kind of example. Um, let me pull up the schedule page. Um, so as you can see here now, uh, here's a game from 1918. Uh, we've got penalty data, we've got the full scoring summary, and we've got all the, all the, all the stats, you know, all the kind of basic stats, goals, assists, points, um, penalty minutes, um, all of that stuff. So previously we had that kind of for Starting in the Gretzky era, it was 7980. Uh, this new update that we rolled out uh, now expands it all the way back to the beginning. So now all of those, all of that information is on our site and in our database. When we get to Katie's portion of the presentation, you'll see just how much you can do now that we've added that data. But I just wanted to start uh, by pointing out that all of that is there. So if you go to uh, a player page, like here is uh, Harry Cameron, um, You'll now see for him uh, game logs and splits, 
uh, we use the game, we use the box score data to create those stats. So here now you can see uh, uh, his game logs from 1970, 1918. You can see every game he played. All of these tables are sortable. So if you want to quickly see like some high scoring type games, you can do that. Um, same deal here with split stats. If you're not familiar with that term, uh, split stats just mean kind of situational statistics. So because we have the game logs, we know how this how, how these players did uh, like on the ho at home versus on the road. Uh, we can check how they did in wins and losses, split it off by opponent, by month. Um, so this gives you just kind of more information beyond just before all we really had was just, you know, here's how many goals he scored in the season. Uh, now you know exactly when he scored those goals, where he scored them, what, ha what was happening in the games he was scoring at them, um, et cetera. And then we also have uh, these scoring logs where you can actually see kind of like a breakdown of every, every goal that the player scored in that season, which I think is pretty cool. You can see the period, the minutes, um, kind of a description of who assisted. Again, uh, file all that away. Uh, when, when we get to Kay's presentation, you'll see just how much you can do with all of that stuff in StatHead. Um, so that is uh, if you want to look at the past. Um, but if you want to look at the present, we have a lot, uh, a lot more data, obviously, for, for, for this season than we do for 1917 uh, uh, hockey. Um, so this is kind of just the overview page for 20, 2020, 2021, uh, last season. Um, as you scroll down, you'll see kind of these tables with like team stats um, and stuff like that. Uh, but I really want to highlight, if you go back up to this gray bar, you'll see a lot of different options. Uh, so you can go to a more detailed standings page. Uh, we've got a schedule, we've got the full schedule, every single game with every single result. Um, and then I really want to show you, if you hover over skaters, you'll get different tables uh, that show kind of like different kinds of stats. So this is uh, a table with every player in the league uh, with their kind of basic stats. So you can see here goals, assists, um, uh, kind of a breakdown on like even strength versus power play, time on ice, you know, blocks, hits, kind of all the classics. Um, you can also go to this one for advanced stats. And I do want to take a moment to just kind of go over, I'm sorry if this is going to be basic, but I just want to make sure uh, that I at least go into a little detail on what these advanced stats are. So we have the big ones are, are Corsi and Fenwick. Um, you can look at them at different situations. By default, this table shows them at even strength, but you can look at, you know, power play, shorthanded, you know, four on four, et cetera. Um, but basically a, a, a Corsi event, um, a, as you'll see if you hover over it, um, a Corsi event is basically just a shot. So it includes shots on goals, block shots, and ones that uh, aren't on goal, shots that kind of miss. Um, Every single one of those is a Corsi event. So if your team uh, uh, has, has a Corsi event while you're on the ice, that's a Corsi for, if your team takes a shot. If the other team takes a shot, that's Corsi against. Um, and then those in a vacuum don't really tell you that much, but if you look at the Corsi for percentage, you can see like the rate of cor total Corsi events that were in the player's favor uh, or the team's favor. In theory, if you're generating more shots than your opponent, you're doing something right. Um, we also have for players, uh, what I think is really interesting, uh, which is relative Corsi four rate. Um, and this shows the difference, the player's impact on the Corsi rate, basically. So whether it goes up or down when they're on the ice and, and by how much. Uh, so it's, it's basically like the, the player's Corsi four rate minus the, the, the rate when they're off, um, off the ice. Uh, and again, you know, with stuff like that, you'll need to evaluate kind of strategic decisions, kind of what the, what the coach is doing, what situations they're using the player. You can't just look at it in a vacuum and be like, this guy is the best player in the league because he has the highest core seat. But um, it's interesting to look at. And then Fenwick is the same, same deal, um, but without uh, blocks. Um, then we've got PDO, which shows uh, more interesting to me on a team level, but it shows basically uh, the shooting percentage plus the save percentage. Um, and then we have zone starts here, basically like uh, wh what percentage of face-offs are taking place in the offensive zone versus the defensive zone. Um, and then we have this cool uh, expe expected plus minus, which uses kind of the shot position that the players are giving up when they're on the ice to basically come up with an estimate of like based on where the shot comes from, 
um, on average, how many times is that shot made? So on average, how much would you expect a player's plus minus to be uh, um, versus like, you know, how, uh, the actual number, which is obviously, you know, someone may make a 2% shot or miss a 95% shot. You know, I mean, that happens, you know, obviously uh, it happens 2% of the time that someone makes a 2% shot, but um, they, uh, uh, this is just kind of an interesting like advanced stat to kind of see maybe what's going on once you remove some of kind of the luck and randomness uh, of it. And then um, we've got some other stuff on there. Uh, you can also take a look at shift data. Um, we have time on ice, uh, number, like kind of average shift length, all of that stuff. You can see the breakdown of kind of situationally when they're playing. Um, so yeah, that kind of goes into all of that. Oh, another thing that we kind of added recently was we just made it easier to find hat tricks and penalty shots. So now there's this page, which is just a list of every hat trick uh, from the season. Uh, we've got the same deal with every penalty shot. And then if you go to the leaderboard, we, we have, uh, I, I think we added this maybe a couple of years ago, but we, we've added sections for hat tricks. So you can see, you know, most career hat tricks. If you go to a team franchise page, you can see who has the most hat tricks for that franchise. Um, so we've just really kind of beefed up, you know, or you can see the full list of the hat tricks. So we've just kind of beefed up, you know, some of the, some of the coverage of that stuff. Um, and then obviously in addition to skater stats, we have goalie stats. So right up on the same bar, if you go over to goalies, you can look at that. Um, I, uh, if people want me to, I can go into some of the kind of advanced uh, goalie stats. Um, but you can see we also have kind of the basic ones, um, like save and save percentage. But yeah, you know, quality starts and kind of kind of the 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 index goal allowed stat. Um, and then yeah, I think that that that's pretty much good. Oh, uh, one thing that we also had recently is we have preseason odds, both the over unders and the odds of winning the title. And those those go back kind of historically. So if you're looking into um, how often over, overs and unders hit, or, you know, kind of looking looking at kind of how this year's Stanley Cup odds compared to past years, we've got a pretty robust historic database of all that stuff. So, you know, whether you're looking at gambling itself, whether you're trying to prepare gambling related content, um, you know, there's, there's some coverage in there that's good. And then the last thing I want to point out on kind of the, the main site, uh, if you go down to the uh, most of the stuff you can find in, in the header. So like on the seasons page, you can, you can select any season. Uh, you can even get directly to those stat pages on here. Um, you can go to the teams page and look up any team. And obviously like we'll have the full roster and all of the player stats and all of that stuff. But if you scroll down to the footer, there's a few extra links. And one of them, that's kind of a page that, you know, a lot of people maybe don't pick up on is this frivolity section. Um, this has just a bunch of fun, interesting things that we created because we were thinking about what could we do with this massive database, what kind of fun stuff we could do. So if you're interested in seeing player salaries, this is where they live. We've got um, all the salaries and the cap hits and they're, they're sortable um, like that. You just click on any header basically and it'll sort, you know, most, we've got uh, this kind of repository of all the overtime playoff goals, which I use all the time when we get to the postseason. Um, but, you know, the one thing I really came over here to point out is uh, we actually do a playoff uh, probability forecast um, and it updates every day of the season. So as you're kind of following along, if you're curious to see, you know, just kind of a snapshot of what, where the, where the races stand, who's still alive, um, especially towards kind of the middle part of the season, we use uh, this advanced stat called uh, Simple Rating System, SRS, which uses point, point differential uh, or goal differential. It measures for, and it adjusts for strength of schedule. So a lot of times if you see, there may be a team who's doing great, but they played an easy schedule. There may be a team who's doing terribly, but they played a hard schedule. And over time, they'll even out. Uh, so the forecast, or they, they may have just had bad luck in close games and won goal games. So this forecast tries to account for all of that and put together kind of just a, you know, it, it, it's a pretty simple forecast, um, but uh, it, it's just an interesting way to get kind of a snapshot of the season. So um, I'm a little ahead of schedule, but that was pretty much everything I had for my part. So uh, let me just um, return 
to here and uh, see if anyone has any questions before I turn it over to Katie. Um, if you do have questions, just go ahead and drop them in the chat and I will, uh, we will see them in there. Um, all right, it doesn't look like anyone has any questions. Oh, here we go. Uh, where did we find the odds? Um, we, uh, uh, that's a great question. I can't remember exactly where, um, but we uh, talked to a researcher who is keeping tabs on those uh, going back several years. Um, so uh, uh, I believe that's our source for that. Um, I, I, I can uh, check with the hockey people and, and get back to you with a, with a firmer answer on that if you're interested. Um, uh, but there, uh, yeah, any other questions? Oh, we're on the site. Oh, yeah, there you go. Um, that makes more sense. So in order to uh, get to those, um, let me just get out of the uh, presentation screen and go back onto here. So in order to see those odds, if you go to seasons and, and just go to any season. So I'll just click the summary page to get us to last year. Um, there's this gray bar here that kind of links off to different pages. And under the drop down with more, uh, the last one there is preseason odds. So just go to the, the page for the season, uh, hover over more and click preseason odds and you'll, you'll get right to there. And then once you're there, you can click next season or previous season uh, to roll back through the years. Um, so yeah, great question. Uh, any other questions uh, before I turn it over to Katie? Okay, uh, well, there's still, uh, if any stuff comes up as, as Katie's going, or if you just have more questions, um, you can uh, go ahead and, and drop them in the chat. But for now, uh, I'll turn it over to Katie, and she's going to go over kind of like, now that you know what we have on the site, she's going to explain uh, how you can really, really dig into those numbers with the with these new tools. So Katie, take it away. Um, all right, guys. Uh, it looked like some for some reason uh, my, uh, my video... <laughs> My webcam has, has, has disappeared on me. Um, so hold on, I'm just gonna have to adjust here. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little embarrassing here. Get the webcam in the right place. All right, yeah, we should be, uh, we should be all set now to go. Um, all right, so my name is Katie Sharp, as Joanna mentioned, and, um, I am the customer success and social media associate for StatHead. So I deal basically just with everything that has to do with StatHead that's across all the four sports. Um, and so I deal with not only like helping people with questions, helping people use StatHead, but also I'll deal with account questions and, and billing stuff and, and kind of some of those administrative tasks as well. And then I also run the StatHead account um, for us, uh, the Twitter account. Uh, we don't, we're not on Instagram yet, but uh, we're hoping to get there soon. <laughs> um, so basically kind of what I wanted to, to start off with is basically what is StatHead? And, kind of, and as Jonah mentioned, basically in just one sentence, it's essentially kind of the most powerful, most comprehensive research tool for sports statistics anywhere on the internet, in, in my honest opinion. Um, and you can basically do any sort of research. Uh, there's a a ton of different search tools and I'll go through some of those um, as we get further into this webinar. Um, but if there's a question that you have and some sort of answer that you want about hockey statistics, um, and now that we have hockey statistics going back for the entire history of the league, you can probably find it using StatHead. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start off now with sharing my screen and um, I'm gonna kind of just go over some of the, all the tools um, that we have. And hold on, let me just uh, get this here. Let's get here. Uh, right there. All right, can you guys uh, all see that now? We're all good, uh, hopefully. Um, so this is the StatHead Hockey uh, homepage. And as you can see here, it's just stathead.com um, slash hockey. And this is where you're going to find all the different search tools that are available for hockey. And what we do is basically what 
what, what, I, what I'm going to say is we call these tools finders because essentially what you're doing is you're finding the answer to a question, right? Um, and each of the different tools searches through a different section of our database, whether it's games, seasons, the draft, um, so the advanced stats. Um, those are the kind of the three main things uh, that we have here available. And obviously it's kind of pretty obvious, but game finders will search through game level data, box scores, season finders will search through season level data. Um, and uh, it's pretty self-explanatory what, uh, what the tools are. Um, so what I'm gonna do is kind of, first what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go over basically how to do a stat head search. And for some of you, if you're familiar with stat head, this might seem a little repetitive, might seem basic, but I just wanna make sure that we're getting everybody up to speed so that I can go through then do the different tools and make sure that everybody's on the same page here. So um, essentially what you do is when you're doing the search, you just start off with a question, right? So you've got a question that you need to answer. Maybe you're writing a story and you want to find that, you know, that key statistical nugget to put in your story. Maybe you're watching a game and you see some guy score four goals in one minute or something like that. And you're, you're kind of curious about that. So you start off with your question. And then what you do is you're going to go pick the tool that's going to try and answer that question. Um, so that's, you know, either the game finder or the season finder, um, something like that. And we'll just go to the game finder page here, which is the player game finder. And the layout of this page is pretty much the same on all of the different search tools that you'll see, so which is really cool. Um, so that it's pretty easy to use all of them once you know how to use one of them. And at the top, I'm just going to go over this high level. I'll go into this a little bit more detail once I go through some of the, once I go through the tools specifically. But at the top, this is what we call like the radio button section. Um, and they determine like what kind of question you're asking. Are you asking it at the season level or at the game level data? Um, and like I said, I'll explain that to you in a little bit in a few more minutes. And then down here, on the left side is where you're gonna set all of your filters. So there's a ton of different filters. Some are specific for games, some are specific for the seasons. Um, and that's where you're gonna set your criteria for the question that you're gonna ask. Um, so you're gonna tell, tell Stathead, hey, you know, I wanna add, I want this criteria, these seasons, these many goals, you know, this age, something like that. And so over here on that left side, that's where you're gonna do that. And then at the bottom, we've got this nice big purple button and that's where the magic happens. And you click that and that's where you get your results. And then the results will show up here. So at a very, very high level, um, that, is, that is how you do a stat head search. I'm gonna go back to the, uh, the hockey homepage here. And I wanna start off with the, and, all right, we're not loading here. Uh, Let's just go straight to the season finder. I like to start off with the season finder. Um, all right, hold on a second here. Wonders of technology. We'll just. All right, here we go. All right, there we go. So we're going to start off. Well, I like to start off with the season finder because it's kind of the most, most basic one here. And so, like I said, this, this season finder is going to let you search for season level data. So up here at the top, we've got a, a couple of different options. I'm going to go through them. Uh, the first one is pretty obvious when you want to just search for single season performances. So most goals in a single season, um, you know, most, uh, most assists, whatever it is, you're going to use that first option. This section, second option is uh, when you're looking across seasons. So this is like what you would do if you're looking for like career statistics, or if you're looking for the most, uh, the guy that's had the most assists from 1985 to 1990. So multiple seasons at a time. Um, this third option right here, this is a little bit different. So this is going to actually count up the seasons based on the criteria that you set. So this is something you would use for if you're looking for most 20 goal seasons. 
uh, by a player in his career. Uh, the most 50 point seasons in a play by a player in his career. Um, and uh, so that's that's kind of a that's more of a more of a counting one. It's not like totaling up. It's based on what criteria you use. Now these two at the bottom are actually team based. So this first one, um, what it, this does is it lets you look at teams that have the most players matching the criteria. So this is something that you would use if you want to find the team teams that have had you know the most twenty goal scorers. Uh, so a team that had three 20 goal scorers or three, you know, two 40 goal scorers on its team in a single season. Um, so you'd use that one. And then this last one here is the same thing as we did over here, but it's looking over multiple seasons. So in the 1990s, which team um, had the most 30, 30 point players, something like that. Um, so all these different options up here at the top, as I explained, these are the radio buttons. What we like to we call the radio buttons, and they let you set what type of search you're doing. Is it a single season, multiple seasons, counting up seasons, things like that? Um, and over here we have the search criteria, pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you're choosing like a single season, here is where you'll get all the statistics. I'm not going to go through all of this. Um, you know, you you guys can see which statistics we have. Uh, if it's not indicated with a, like a since 1959-60, that means that we have it all time. And as I mentioned, you know, as Jonah mentioned, we just got all this new data going back to the first season of the NHL in 1917 to 18. Um, you can also choose the position here. Um, so not only can you look at like just skater, you can, you can uh, whittle it down to wing, center, defenseman, and then obviously we have goalie statistics as well. If you choose goalie evils, the statistics will change to goalie statistics here. You're not gonna, you're not gonna have uh, game winning goals uh, when you choose goalie there. Um, and then here we have some more filters. Um, so these are more, these are the statistical filters. It's basically anything that's in the sort by section up there is what you can set statistical filters. So if you're looking for uh, players that have had at least you know, 50 points in a season, you would go 50, you go, you choose points, and then you would set that to 50 right there. Um, and another cool thing is that if you mess up, you can easily remove any of these filters with this button right here. Uh, we also have biographical filters. These are things like age, uh, country, uh, whether they're lefty shooters, righty shooters, um, things like that. And then this last one, is is important if you're kind of this is mostly using if you're looking for like rookies. Um, I use this a lot for looking for rookie rookie records, rookie CD who have like uh, you know beats or something like that. So that's the season finder. Um, basically, the, the most basic one. Um, pretty self-explanatory there. Um, now let's go to the game finder. All right, that's good. Nice and speedy there. Um, and like I said, the game finder is if you're looking for box score level data. So you're looking for, um, you know, specific things that happen within a game. And um, like I, as I did before, I'm going to explain these buttons up here at the top. First one, really self-explanatory single game. These are just single game performances. You're writing a story, something cool happens in a game. This is what you're going to use. Um, this second one is really interesting. What this does is it kind of acts like the season finder, um, but it's using game level data. So, so basically what it says is it's searching for cumulative games matching this criteria. So it adds up all the different games that match the criteria um, you set here, and then it sums up the statistics in those games. And it can be either year to year. So here we can group results so you can look at single game single year performances or over sort of the course of a career and i'll just i'll do an example um for that so basically you would use this if you kind of wanted to find who's had the most goals through the first 10 games of their career right so what you would do is you set it to right here you're searching for cumulative games because you want to add up all the goals over those 10 first 10 games you do it over course of career right here because you're looking at their career 
you're sorting by goals, skater. And then what we would do is we'd go into this cool filter right here. It's called span of games. We show that. And you can set here their first game to their 10th game, right? And then all you got to do is click this. And hopefully it doesn't take too long. Um, and there you have it. Uh, <laughs> going back, I think that this, this data, you know, obviously going back a, a little bit long, um, but most modern guy here is, uh, is Don Murdoch there uh, in 1977. So that's kind of one of the cool things. The other thing you can do here is if you're doing something more, um, more relevant to the year, if you wanted to look at, let me get rid of these filters here. Something like the most goals that a player scored in March, right? So maybe just for the current seat, we'll, we'll, we'll do, uh, let's go back here. Yeah. Well, let's uh, go back to a non-pandemic year here. <laughs> we can actually have March data. So if what we have one of the filters here, is game month and you can set it to March here. So basically what we're doing is we're trying to find who had the most goals, cumulative games in the month of March in the 2018-19 season. And so we would go like that. And there you can see, uh, there's your answer right there. So this, uh, this cumulative games option for the, the player game finder is pretty cool. Um, it takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, the key things to remember are how you want to group the results there. And then if you use any of these span of game filters, um, which are pretty cool, you can use it by player, the team game number, or this is used obviously for playoffs. Um, all right, so going back up here to the top, these third and fourth options are also pretty self-explanatory. Um, searching for season games, matching the criteria. This is basically how many you know, three goal games, who had the most three goal games in a season, um, things like that. When you set your criteria here and then it's just counting up the number of games that match that criteria over here. And the same thing for this fourth button over here, but this looks across multiple seasons or for careers. So obviously we have like those special hat trick um, leaderboards that Jonah showed you, but if you wanted to find who had the most hat tricks, um, you know, from 19, uh, 1990 to 1993, uh, you would probably, you would want to use this and then you would set obviously statistical filters with goals uh, greater than or equal to three right there. So, um, all right. So I think that kind of covers basically the, the game finder. Like I said, those are the two most popular ones that you're going to use. Um, another cool one is the streak finder. So this lets you look for uh, streaks of certain criteria, goal streaks, point streaks, uh, multi-goal streaks. Uh, and I'm just gonna explain this pretty quickly. It's, it's a little, it can get a little bit confusing because there's a couple different filters over here. Um, so the way that you wanna do it is there's this, what we call the, stat, the streak stat events filter right here. And then we have the statistical filters you mainly want to focus on this one right here if you're using the street fighter. That's the key thing to remember. This is what, if you're just looking for basic, like how many times, uh, how many games in a row, what's the most consecutive uh, games for scoring at least one goal, you would use this street stat finder and you'd set goals, you know, eight equal to one, um, and then you would get your results there. Where it gets a little confusing is if you wanted to do a more complicated search for something like in games where a player scored at least one goal, um, what's the most consecutive games that he also had, um, you know, two assists or something like that. And so that that's a little bit more complicated. I really don't want to go into it here, um, but you can just kind of play around with those filters and those different stat streaks, uh, this, the streak finder. Um, but for most people, for most things, you're gonna be just using this filter right here, stat streak events right there. Um, and as we mentioned here, the data channel is a little bit different um, in that 
by rule, the, the streaks only last one season. They don't carry over into across seasons. It's different for baseball, football, we know. Um, so this, what it does is it lets you use this checkbox to go by the NHL rule and to contain the streaks to within one season. Uh, the next thing I want to do is let's go see if we can go back to the hockey uh, page here. And I want to show you a couple of the ones that are really specific to hockey, which I think are pretty cool. And the first one is this player goal finder. Um, and this is maybe my, my one of my most, my favorite, my favorite hockey tools just because uh, I'm a stat junkie. So basically you can get so into the weeds here in trying to, to use this one. Um, finding basically what it does is it lets you find every single goal that's ever been scored in the NHL in its entire history based on like a hundred different types of criteria essentially um, and like as you can see here we've got the score we've got the assisters we've got the goalie um, the time whether you know the age the career goal number I think that's a pretty cool one um, where it's played and all of those different filters are you can find here in these drop downs here. Uh, so it just kind of takes a little bit of getting used to seeing, you know, where each filter is. So the game state filters that refers to like score, um, whether it's empty net, you know, the period, the time of the goal, the situation filters are more things like even strength. Um, oh, actually, uh, oh, we've got the even strength here in this, in the situations right there. Um, the situation filters are more like the game location. So is it home, road, um, game number, things like that. And obviously we've got the player filters, but this tool is really cool. Um, and I would highly suggest just playing around with this. There's so many different things that you can do with it. Um, and uh, uh, I, I really like to use that one. Um, and then the other one, uh, which is unique to hockey is these advanced stat, this is player advanced stat finder. Um, and as, as, as Jonah explained, we have all these advanced stats and this is where you're gonna be able to query them. Um, obviously we only have all of this stuff going back to the 2007-08 season. So it's a little bit limiting in that fact. Um, and it's only at the season level. So you're not gonna be able to find, I know a lot of people ask like most hits in a game or, or most face-offs won in a game. We don't really have that yet at the game level. Um, we just have that at the season level. So this is just at the season level where you can query for those advanced stats um, that Jonah had, uh, had showed you earlier. And going back to this, the homepage here, um, we also have everything available. We also have the team game finder, the team street finder, and the team advanced stat finder. That's seasons as well. They work the same way that the player ones do. So I'm not going to really go through this. Um, uh, basically, it's just the same here uh, with the games. We've got that cumulative season option. Um, this one is the same. This one we didn't have over there. That's the same as the cumulative season that I showed you before for the players, except it lets you go across multiple seasons. Um, and, uh, and then these pretty self-explanatory here for the team games. And then the same with the team street finder as well. As I mentioned before, you really want to focus on this stat streak event here, this purple box. Um, that's where you're going to really, that's probably what you're going to use the most. Um, the, the other unique thing about hockey is that it does have all these different, as we all know, it has all these different types of um, wins and losses and ties and all the different rules that it's gone through during its history. So just got to choose here um, which version you want to use. Uh, and it's really just a lot of, uh, you know, just kind of figuring out where it is and, and the question, as I mentioned before, the question you want to answer and then how are you going to find that answer using the different tools. And then finally, another cool one that I wanted to show you here with the, the players is this player comparison finder. This one's pretty popular. Um, you know, it settles a lot of bar, bar debates and, and, and trivia questions and, and whatnot. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's obviously really easy. You just type player in here and then it spits out a comparison of the different players. And it's just really easy, um, a really easy format to kind of compare two players to how they do you when know, we break it out with the regular season and the playoffs. Um, 
so let's see. That pretty much explains, I think, most of what all the different tools. Um, I know I went through this kind of fast. Um, there's so much here. And I just really want to emphasize um, that the best way to kind of learn how to do StatHead is to just go out and try it. Just, just do it. Just try it, you know, get into the weeds and, and say, you know, whatever you have to do, just, just do it. It's trial and error. Um, so uh, one thing I do want to point out is the ability to, to download and export and share all this data is a really, really powerful part of, of the StatEd experience. Um, so at the top of every single data table right here is we have this, we have this menu here, it's export data. Um, and so what it does is it, there's, two, there's three different things here. Basically, the first option here is if you want to share this table, like you want to put it into a Reddit post or you want to put it um, embedded into a, a blog post or something, um, or you, maybe you just want to share the URL, um, but you don't want to just share the entire page. You want to specifically, you know, maybe you only want to share like three different columns from this table. So what this does is it allows you to really customize this uh, table. So let's say you only wanted to share, um, let's say you only wanted to show everything, but just points up to points, right? So you wanted to show points assists um, from this table, but you didn't want to show any of these bold things over here. So it's pretty cool. You can just go like this and that gets rid of all. So this one gets rid of all the columns to the right. But let's say you didn't really want this one that has the at button here. So you just click the X on that and that gets rid of that column. And now you've got this column. And like I said, you can put it into a Reddit post, you can put it into uh, an HTML table, whatnot. You can also just create a URL. So you click this URL for sharing, save it. And there is this URL and uh, anybody can view this, anybody without a stat, even people without a stat has subscription will be able then to just view this table um, right here that you created. Um, and then the other option here is, this is probably the most powerful thing, is just to get this, you, if you click Get Excel as Workbook, what it does is it essentially downloads. So let's reload this page right here. So it will download this entire table to Excel um, automatically. So you can, you can see down there. <laughs> Uh, down there at the bottom, um, or you can get it as a CSV. So maybe you don't use Excel, but you use uh, some other sort of spreadsheet program, or you got a database that you want to use. So you just click this, and then um, you can just copy this, and it's a CSV format. Really easy right there. Um, and that's really useful um, because, like I said, a lot of these, a lot of, a lot of these queries will have multiple pages of results. So maybe you want to download the entire set of results. So you've got to download. Okay, we're there, you go down to the bottom and then you click next page down there, brings up the next page and then you can just download it again, copy and paste. You can put it all into one spreadsheet and then you can do whatever you wanna do with it in an Excel document. And then uh, the last thing that I wanna show you here on this page um, is this share results button. And I showed you that one over here um, in this option right here. But this one basically just lets you share this entire page. This, it's super quick. You just click this and then it creates this tiny link for you. So you copy that or you can click this to copy the clipboard, whatever you want to do. And then you can send this, you can put it in an email, you can put it on Twitter, you can put it on Instagram, you can send a text to somebody um, with this link and anybody can use this link to view this table, even if they don't have a stat as subscription. Um, so you, you can share all this data with your friends, your family, maybe your colleagues or whatever. You can put it into stories. Um, it's really helpful if you're a journalist and, and you're writing a story and you wanna link to, to these results to show the work. Um, and then anybody that reads your story, even if they don't have a stat head subscription, can click on that link and see the table, see the full set of results um, for whenever you're talking about in, in that story. Um, all right, so I think that that basically kind of sums it up here, the, the screen sharing. So let's stop that, get back to, uh, get back to normal here. Um, 
and obviously we'll we'll open it up to questions um, if anybody has anything. And uh, um, let's see, we got a few here. Let's see. Yeah, there were a couple questions. If you want, I can I can read them off, and you can. Uh... Yeah, my webcam is just totally not working right now. The right oh. one, so I'm like, I'm <laughs> doing a little makeshift thing here. Um, um, so the first question, uh, it looks like the the person who asked it did figure it out, but I just figured since they put it in the chat, maybe more people are wondering. So, um, if you want to use more than one uh, statistical filter in setting up a uh, set head search, can you do that? And uh, if so, how? Yeah, so that's actually a good question. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna go back to, uh, to sharing my screen here. Uh, let's see if I can get back to that. Where are we? Um, all right, where are we? So, all right. So uh, let's go, let's start off here. Go straight to the season finder here. So yeah, so if you wanted to do multiple filters, it's really easy. Um, so let's see if you wanted to find, this is, we're in the season finder. So let's got, find seasons with at least 20 goals and 20 assists, right? So right there. And then we can put in 20. And then all you do is just go choose another statistical filter. You go to assists right there. Hey, let's heck, let's let's do it for guys that are at least uh, uh, 35 years old. I have no idea if anybody can meet this. Um, so you do that and you're saying, oh, wait a second, you know, I only want active players. Okay, so we got that. So literally we, you know, oh wait, I want to look at guys that uh you know, had at least one game winning goal in that season too. Um, so you, I mean, literally I could keep going here, but that's the way that you do it. You just choose another statistical filter. You keep going. Um, like I said before, you can remove them. Oh wait, I don't want that. Oh, I don't care about the age like that. Uh, and then you go click your results right there. So that is, uh, that's how you do that one. Um, all right, it looks like the next question was from Adrian, uh, and he wanted to know if in the streak finder it is possible to run searches for consecutive games played streaks. Um, let's see. It should be possible. Let's see. So I actually haven't run this one in a while for hockey. I'm going to show my screen here. Um, go back to that. Um, thanks for these questions, by the way. If you have any more, feel free to drop them uh, in the chat. Um, all right, so what you would do is, so it is, I mean, you would obviously want to look for consecutive games right here. Um, and you'd want to probably set this uh, out here to that. So what you would do is then, I believe all you have to do is set a, you know, honestly, I haven't really done this search, this street furniture search. So let's see. Um, all right, well, let's just try and see what happens when we do this because we're experimenting here. Um, and let's just set the minimum here. We know that there's going to be somebody at least 10 games in a row. And this one may take a little while here. Um, just because the street finder, it's going through a bunch of things. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing this right now and we'll go back to that. Uh, is there any other questions that we have here? Um, yeah, there was one other question uh, from Rand um, while that one is cooking. Um, he wanted to know, or uh, Rand wanted to know, uh, in the player comparison finder, is there a way to compare advanced statistics? Um, so, you know, something beyond just goals and, and assists. Um, let's see. 
Yeah, we don't have that right now. Um, it's just the statistics that you see right there, uh, the basic stuff. Um, obviously, we're, we're continuing to kind of improve everything, and, and these suggestions are great. Um, so we'll, we'll, that, we'll put that on our project list, as I like to say, which is growing, which is growing bigger by, by the day. Um, but right now, it's just kind of the advanced statistics. Uh, and, um, but you can look at it over different sorts of seasons and different age ranges and everything like that. Um, but uh, hopefully at some point, maybe even during this season, uh, we'll be able to add adding the advanced statistics into the player comparison finder. Um, and it looks like um, I'm looking back at our thing and it looks like you are not able to do that consecutive game search um, right now. Uh, that's something that we can look into implementing um, and figuring out how to do that. But I guess programmatically, um, it just is not working. Um, you're not able to, uh, to do that right now. Yeah, my so guess would be that, that question. My guess would be that it's digging through the game log. So it's looking at. Yeah, um, it's looking for consecutive games. Played lines, yeah, so it'll skip a, any game that they don't play. And it has to, you actually have to set some sort of criteria in there. So you would have to like set like at least like minutes played or something like that. Um, yeah, you could maybe try minutes. it with time on ice and see. Yeah, yeah, we could try it with time on ice. But um, that's a good question. I'll have to do some more research on that. Um, uh, but uh, but yeah, that's a that's a great question, and it's it's something that's pretty cool because you know hockey is a, the Iron Man sport, right? No days off. Yeah, it looks like Mark is saying that uh, there's a you can do time on ice. Yeah, yeah, so it's available ice. since the yeah. Um, all right, uh, we got a question from Adam uh, who wants to know if you can look at a game finder for a specific player. Um. Let's see, hold on. I believe, I'm pretty sure you can do that. Let me go here. Um, excuse me. So if you go to the player page, so let's just go to red holes and I'm gonna make sure that we can, yeah, okay. I just wanted to make sure that we had that on there. Um, all right, so now I'm going to share my screen. Um, this. All right. So what you want to do is you actually, to do that, is what you want to do is you want to start off on the player page. So like on Hockey Reference. So here we're on Brett Hole. Um, and what you do is it's fairly easy. You just click this link right here, this Game Finder link. What it does is it actually opens up a stat head hockey page in a new tab. Can you guys see that? Did it switch to that tab? Uh, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you are cool. All right, cool. I always forget if it, it switches tabs there. Um, and this is just the, the game finder, but this is only for, for Brett Holt. So it's the same format here, up here. Um, and it's, a, it's got his positions and seasons set already for you. And then if you wanted to look at uh, games where he had, you know, three points or more like that. Um, and then that would give you all his games with uh, at least three points. And obviously we're ranking them here by goals because that was the criteria that we had here set sort by descending goals, but you can sort by whatever you wanted, wanted there. And then um, really easy then to just go back to his player page right there. I can copy it. Oh, oh, that. All right. Good thing I didn't. I didn't click that link. That one's broken. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, so that's how you find uh, the players, like specific player game finders. Um, all right, so we're kind of getting, uh, 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 getting in, into one o'clock. Uh, so um, let me just uh, kind of move on to, to the last thing, which is kind of like, you know, what's next, you know? Um, so uh, uh, first of all, uh, thank you all again so much for coming. Um, now that you've done the presentation, you've seen what StatHead can do, you've seen what's on the site, uh, the next step is to get going yourself. So um, you can start by creating your, your StatHead account. And then when you sign up, um, you uh, can sign up for the annual plan using the discount code and you'll get, you'll get three months 
uh, 25% off the annual plan. So you're basically getting three free months uh, with an annual plan. Um, and then once you've signed up, you've used the discount code, you've created your account, uh, it's time to enjoy StatHead. Um, however, uh, 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 we're not just gonna leave you totally on your own once you're, once you're going. Um, if you have questions, um, if, you're, if you're kind of, you know, this sort of stuff that came up during the presentation, the sort of stuff you all were asking, um, as more stuff like that comes up, feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can talk to us on social media. Um, we have a, a account that's specifically for StatHead, that's at StatHead. Um, and you can always ask them for questions. You can also ask uh, at hockey underscore ref, that's the hockey reference account. And we're, we're happy to help you from either one. Um, we'll also, you know, just kind of publicize different stuff you can do with the sites and different kind of educational tools, all of that stuff. Um, we're about to start our uh, hockey reference Instagram. So if you're on Instagram and you prefer kind of that visual stuff, uh, follow us at, at hockey reference. And then if you're a Facebook user, we're there too, stathead and uh, hockey.reference. And then lastly, if you would rather just email us, um, uh, feel free. Uh, our email is support at stathead.com. And whether it's a billing issue or a question about how to use the site or a new feature you'd like to see uh, added to Stathead, whatever it is, feel free to reach out to us and we are uh, happy to help. Um, so once again, here is the discount code. And uh, there was a question about whether it applies to renewals. Katie, do you know um, how that would work or? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at that. I believe it should be for renewals. Um, If Maggie, it, do you remember if do you remember if we decided it was going to be for renewals or not? Yeah, I think people are welcome to use it on renewals. Great. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm just checking in here in the settings. Yeah, it looks like it should be it should be able to be used for for any renewals as well. Okay, great. It's, it's so annual. What, remember, it's annual subscriptions only, though. Yeah, whether you're a, a new, totally new to Stathead or whether you've already subscribed and you uh, just want to catch the deal. Um, uh, either way, and yeah, again, it's it's just the annual plan, um, but you get uh, three free months with that. Uh, and again, the code is hockey three free if you just want sad head hockey or sports three free if you want all the sports. Um, uh, mo the tools uh, across the sports all work very similarly to what you saw today. And uh, we're actually doing another one of these about basketball on Thursday. Um, so if you are interested in that, um, then uh, feel free to uh, hop on that. It'll be a very similar call to this, but obviously focused on basketball. Um, so that is it uh, from us. Uh, so if you have any questions or if there are any issues with signing up with the code or anything, you know, again, email us support at sadhead.com. Uh, we'll email all of this out to you, including a full video of the presentation as soon as it's over. Uh, but thanks again for, uh, if you're on the East Coast, giving up your lunch hour, if you're on the West Coast, you know, coming in a little early and uh, watching the presentation. Uh, thanks so much and uh, have a good rest of your day and enjoy, uh, enjoy the games tonight. Hockey's back.